Hello, and welcome to our Bible study lesson for the week of April 28, 2024. I'm your host, Minister Marshall Bell. I greet you in the immaculate, exalted, and holy name of Jesus, who is Christ. Let's pray. Dear Master, first I'd like to lift you up and praise your name, because you're worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me to speak to your dear people. Help me to say something on your behalf that will convince them that they need you in their lives. Dear Master, bless each home that's going to be represented here one by one. Bless them one by one and collectively. Dear Master, bless those people in the partner sins that don't know you. These and all of the blessings I ask in our loving Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Today, there are too many people, too many who stand and say that they are standing up for the Lord, but in actuality, are not. They say that they have been handpicked by the Master to do His will, but if you would listen very closely to them, you would understand that they were not. But the Word of God tells us over in Matthew 13, 24 through 30, my master Jesus is speaking here. He says, another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his fields. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went, went his way. But when the grain has sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servant of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your fields? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No. Lest while, lest while you gather up the tufts, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to be burned. Them but gather the wheat into my barns. Now, before I say anything else, think about it. Are you tariff that will be burned bound in bundles with so many others and burned in the fiery depths of hell? Or are you like the wheat that will be gathered together into my master's house in heaven? Do you even know if you are not, do you even know if you are not very sure about this? You just might have a very big problem that only the master can solve. If you would only allow him to. What I'm going, what I'm going to talk to you about today is the Lord chose him a prophet. The Lord chose himself a prophet. That's what I'm saying. The Lord chose himself a prophet. <coughs> We're going to be looking at Isaiah 6, 1 through 13. And that reads, I'm going to be reading this from the New Living Translation Bible because it's kind of long. And so I don't want to take up a whole lot of time on the regular Bible. So I'm going to read it out of the, the New Living Translation Bible. And I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying. In the year King Uzzah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on the lofty throne. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Hovering around him were mighty seraphims. Each with six wings, with two wings they covered their faces, with two wings they covered their feet, and with the remaining two they flew. In a great chorus they sang, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. The glorious singing struck the temple to its foundation, and the entire sanctuary was filled with smoke. Then I said, My destruction is sealed, for I am a sinful man, a member of a sinful race. 
yet I have seen the king, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew over to the altar, and he picked up a burning coal with a pair of thongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now you are guilt. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send as a messenger to my people? Who will go for us? And I said, Lord, I, I'll go. Send me. And he said, Yes, go. But tell my people this. You will hear my words, but you will not understand. You will see what I do, but you will not perceive its meaning. Harden the hearts of those people. Close their eyes and shut their, shut their eyes. Close their ears and shut their eyes. That way they will not see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn to me for healing. Then I said, Lord, how long must I do this? And he replied, until their cities are destroyed, with no one left in them, until their hearts, houses are deserted, and the whole country is an utter wasteland. Do not Stop until the Lord has sent everyone away to this lands, and the entire land of Israel lies desert, deserted. Even if only a tent, a remnant survive, it will be inv inv invaded again and burned. Israel will remain a stump, like a tree that is cut down. But the stump will be a holy seed that will grow again. Ooh, that's kind of long, like I said. But we're going to look at this one by one. Now I'm going to go over to the King James Version Bible. And we're going to read from here. And we're going to look at these chapters one by one like we usually do. And, this, and starting with that first verse, 6, 1, says, In the year the king Ezra died. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high, and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. This verse says a lot because the very first thing that it says is that the year that King Ilzai died. King Ilzai lived from 799 until 739 BCE. If you don't know it, the years are going counting backwards down to the time of Jesus. Now they're going forward, you know, but back in B B C E time they was going down. But anyway, King Uzzah was not a very good king because he disobeyed the Lord. By this timeline, we would we know the year that this event happened between the Lord and Isaiah. Second, this verse tells us that Isaiah saw the Lord, but John says that no man has ever seen God. That's over in John 1, 18. So how did Isaiah see God? Who was Isaiah actually looking at? According to John 12, 14, 12, 41, sorry, Isaiah saw the glory of Christ and Yahweh, much as Moses did. But as I have told you on so many other occasions in the past, Jesus is spoken of all through the Old Testament. No one knew his name. Then so whenever he appears, he is called the angel of the Lord. In this case, Isaiah sees that same person sitting on his throne where he is right now lifted up. The train of his robe filled his heavenly temple. This is a sight that I will see for myself one day. Will you allow me to move on to Isaiah 6 and 2? Isaiah 6 and 2 says, Above it stood seraphims. Each one 
had six wings with two he covered his face with two he covered his feet and with two he flew now Isaiah tells us that the seraphims are six winged fiery angels who surround God as he sits upon his exalted throne and who worship God continuously the seraphims also ministers to the Lord and serve as his agents of purification as demonstrated by their cleansing of Isaiah's sins before he can he begin his prophetic ministry a burning fiery gliding angelic being also a fire colored gliding deserted creature the root is the verb sapphire sapphire which means to set on fire to burn this is why seraphims have a fiery color or appearance or are flame like emotional clearness they are only spoken of once in the entire Bible right here in Isaiah 6 2 because of the spelling of the word these same angels may be talked about in other Old Testament books such as Numbers 21 6 and 8 Deuteronomy 8 15 and Isaiah 14 29 and Isaiah 30 and 6 <coughs> but the word is translated as fiery serpent and appears along with scorpions and vipers maybe the color or motion of the early fiery serpent resembles the fiery angels but the ministry of seraphim angels is closely related to the throne and the praise of God. They are seen constantly glorifying God, extolling His nature and aptitudes, apparent and apparently supervising heaven's worship service. If we can't find the time to praise Him down here, they have nothing but time to make sure that they praise Him up there. These angels are my master's praise and worship team, even though they are not specifically identified as such. Whereas cherubims are positioned beside and around the throne of God, the six-winged seraphims are seen as hovering above the throne as they minister in worship. With all that I have said, I know for sure that there these are some praising angels and how do I know that look at what verse 3 says let's look at verse 3 verse 3 says and one cried to another and said holy 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 is the Lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory <coughs> Holy, holy, holy. They said holy three times. I like to think of these three times as the seraphim saying, Holy is the Father. Holy is the Son. Holy is the Spirit of the Lord. This is a praise to God for revealing his innermost nature. The Hebrew word for holy here means separated, uh, unapproachable. However, there can be a relationship between because the Lord takes the initiative to provide a mediator, and that mediator is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord of hosts is the title for Yahweh, used over 50 times by Isaiah and more than 200 times in the Old Testament. It signifies he is the deliverer surrounded by the host of heavenly power. Glory is the aspect of God's character that emphasizes his greatest and authority. Moving on to verse 4 and 5. Let me check the time. Halfway there. 
4 and 5 says, And the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice of them who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in midst of, pe of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. <laughs> we should all take pointers from these angels because they all because they all had the post of the door shaking they had the pray they had their praise going on and we should as well has he not done enough for us to praise him as we should we all with all of our minds with all of our hearts with all of our souls but just as Isaiah said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. Each of us is the same as Isaiah, because we all are undone with unclean lips as well. Not one of us is clean enough to be in the presence of our God. But because of the shared blood of Christ and our acceptance of him, as our Lord and Savior, we have been washed clean by his blood. I did not say that we would not sin again, but through though the avenue of repentance that the Lord has given us, we are now acceptable enough to God, the Father, that he can now look at us once again as his created beings. <coughs> <coughs> Having the lyric six, woe is me, in chapter five, Isaiah now adds a seventh upon himself as a representative of the wayward nation. They have unclean lips and unclean natures which express themselves in an appropriate speech. And the way that things are happening in our country today, we have become the same. I know that I say this all the time. But look at all of the mass killings which seem as if they have are happening now every other month. All of the political infighting within the political parties and the fighting between the parties themselves stops our elected officials from doing anything meaningful for the people of our country. Too many people today are looking down on others instead of trying to lift others up. As I said at the beginning of the lesson, there are too many who stand and say that they are standing up for the Lord, but in actuality are not. Far too many are calling themselves Christians when they know that they are a lie and the truth cannot be found anywhere in them. My master Jesus said in him, it himself in Matthew 22, 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is a blessing because the chosen ones have met all the Lord requirements to do his will. They will not teach prosperity and leave out the true meaning of the gospel, which as the Lord said in Matthew 22, 37 through 40, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. If only these so-called preachers would only open their hearts and minds to his total grace. If they would stop teaching the word of God as a means of putting large amounts of cash in their back pockets, the Lord might not tell them one day what he says in Matthew 7, 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who 
pra practice lawlessness, you workers of iniquity. So please do not believe that everyone who professes to be a Christian will be in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus warns against self-deception. A mere verbal profession of lordship without obedience to the will of God. It is even possible for a self-deluded person to exercise a spectacular ministry as, as so many other prosperity preachers have. Using the authority of scriptures and the name of Jesus. Without first walking in genuine obedience, discipleship, he is going to gather, to gather the tariff and bind them in the bundles to be burned in hell. And also gather the wheat in his heavenly barn. I am wheat. What are you? Please allow me to move on to Isaiah 6, 6, and 7. It says here, then one of the seraphims flew to me, having in his hand a live coal which he had taken with thorns from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sins purged. This is part of the vision of symbolism. Isaiah was not physically touched by coals, but he was literally cut off. A sinful man in the presence of the Holy One is doomed. But God took the initiative to provide atonement and cleansing because Isaiah was contrary. We need to understand that humility is essential to righteousness, Christ-like behavior. Humility and meekness are spirit engender <coughs> are spirit engender characteristics in the mature believers. Their opposite pride and arrogance have a diabolical source. Humility refuses to promote its own interests, but looks out rather for the interests of others. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord. Understand this is the only way to be cleansed and gain a clearing clear perspective on your call to ministry. Moving on to verse 8. Verse 8 says, And also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. Here the Lord asked the question, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And someone needs to tell me who us is. Allow me to tell you who us is. It is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the entire Trinity. With no hesitation, Isaiah says, send me. The prophet enlightened, enlightened, cleansed, and called is now ready to volunteer for the credible of prophetic ministry. Have you been enlightened, cleansed? and called out from the world to do the master's will. If you are a Christian, you already have been, so there is no need for you to even want to warm the pew. You, you can't sit in the church and not do nothing. You shall, should always be ready to speak on the Lord's behalf. Look at verse 9 and 10, which reads as, let me read that. 9 and 10 says, then I said, here am I. No, no, it says, and he said, go and tell this, pe this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the hearts of these pe this people dull, and their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see them with their e eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and return, and be healed. <laughs> Check my time one more good time. Okay. One of the tasks of the Holy Spirit is to call godly leaders in the kingdom. All men and women are called God. Romans 8, 23, 28 and 30. <coughs> Yet only a few 
respond. Leaders, however, experience a different kind of call and a call in a different way. Many of you are called servantly. Moses was singled out by God who spoke to him from a burning bush. The child Samuel was called while he was asleep. Young Isaiah was worshiping in the temple when he was called by God. Others are called through men. Samuel went to David and anointed him with all. Paul instructed Titus to appoint elders in the church, churches of Crete. There is a difference between being a man of God as all are called to be and being God's man. One call to leadership. But a lot of the preachers that I know did not accept their calling so willingly. Most of us tried everything that we could think of not to take on the job because God is holding us to a higher standard than ordinary people. We will be judged differently because of us being his spokespersons. And since we are, why would anyone want to abuse the ministry of the Lord? The reward that they receive during their lifetime is all that they will get. Because there will be no reward waiting for them in glory. But Isaiah is given no reason to expect a positive response after saying, send me. God knew the nation was now almost beyond re redeemed as it would be in the days of Jesus. But God knows who will stand on his behalf and rightly divide the word of truth because he will prepare whomever he chooses for the task. He knows who will do his will and not their own because many who speak on the word instead of preaching the word just want to make their back pockets fat. Please, please allow me to move on to our final three verses. Isaiah 6, 11 through 13. That says, then I said, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities are laid waste and without inhabitants. The houses are without a man. The land is utterly des uh, desolated. The Lord has removed men from far away. And the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. But yet a tent will be in it and will return and be for consuming as a tambourine tree or uh, as an oak whose stump remains when it is cut down. So the holy seed shall be its stump. <coughs> Excuse me. A tent, rem, a tent, a remnant of what used to be, will return from captivity. A mere stump of the tree will ultimately be left to sprout again as God's holy seed. And those who did return were ready to do the will of God. But how can we know what God's will is? The best way to know that is to be familiar with the Bible. Be familiar with the Word of God. That is because virtually everything you need to know <coughs> concerning the will of God is in the Bible. If you get to know God, God's Word, and understand it clearly, you can know the will of God. In conclusion, if we learn to have a little talk with Jesus, <coughs> if we learn to have a little talk with Jesus, we would commune with him and learn what pleases him. The Bible says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Colossians 3.15. This means that the peace of God is like a regulator. So that when you violate the will of God, his peace leaves you and you have inner turmoil. Immediately discovering you are going against God's will. Even though 
There are many other ways to know his will. Knowing God's word for yourself. For yourself. And also knowing the peace that comes about <coughs> through a continuous relationship with him are the best ways. That's John 15 and 4. You need to understand that Jesus made sure that you will get a chance to know him for yourself. You see, when my master walked into that kangaroo court, he didn't say a mumbling word. He didn't say a mumbling word because he did that for you and me. They took him out back and they beat him. Beat him, but they beat him for you and me. They whipped him. He whipped him for you and me. They pulled the hairs out of his beard for me and you. They spit on him. They kicked him. They called him all kind of names that he was not. They, <laughs> every name they could think of outside of God. They called him that. Then they put a crown of thorns on my master's head. But they did it for you and me. They put a cross on his back. Marched him up a hill called Delgado. The cross was heavy. But it wasn't heavy just because it was heavy. He had the sins of the world on his back. My master climbed up that hill. Crawled, he got it to the top of the hill and laid that cross down. Crawled over and got on the cross. They didn't make my master get on that cross. They didn't force him on it. That what he came here for was to die for you and me. And that's what he did. He got on that cross, stretched his arms out wide so he could push the nails in his hand. Put his feet down low so he could put the nails in his feet. But they messed up when they raised my master. When they raised him up, he said, I'm going to do some drawing. He drew me. He drew so many others. Please let him draw you. Don't let this word come back void. I knew it won't. Because my mouth said it won't come back for us. Somebody out there needs to hear what i just been saying. And they will hear it. Because my master is going to make sure that they hear it. All I'm doing is planting the seed. And he's going to water it and cultivate it. But they took my master down. Put him in a borrowed tomb. He didn't need it long. <laughs> and I need it long. Because on the third day. On that third day. My master walked out of that grave. Raised his hands to the sky. <laughs> on that first Easter getting up Sunday morning and said all power not some of it all power in my hand he got the power to fix whatever you cannot fix I trust him I'm giving him my life I do his will I'm, <laughs> I'm doing this Bible study I do him every week I will talk about my mouth until I'm blue in the face if he allowed me to I want everybody to know how I feel about my master. He is my God. Allow him to be yours. He saved me. I'm going. I'm one of the weak. I'm going to heaven. Don't be a terror and go to hell. It's your choice though. And it's out there for you to do whatever you want. <clears throat> but if you've been listening to me. And you're ready to change. You ready to get your life right? Pray with me right now. Dear Master, I've been listening to that preacher. I heard what he said. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> he told us that <laughs> we don't have to be terror and go to hell. We can be weak and go to hell. We can be with you. All we got to do is change. If you're tired of being what you are right now, you want to change you know, what you can be through him. Dear Master, please hear these people's prayers. Please allow them to change as you would have them to be into what you want them to be. Dear Master, put someone in these people's lives that know you and the pardon of their sins. Somebody know what to do next. Someone that can lead and guide these people to the right place where they need to go to be like you want them to be. They're babes right now, Lord. They're just starting out. I don't care if they're 99 years old. If they just accepted you, they obey. They got to do a little the baby stuff before they can take a full walk and come and up in your ministry, in your word. Your master allowed them to do that. Now, Lord, thank you for choosing me to speak on your behalf. 
Thank you for allowing me to speak every week and say something good about you. Cause you're a good God. <laughs> I, there's no way that I cannot praise you and lift you up. Thank you for choosing me to do that. Even though I cough sometimes, Satan tries to shut me up, but he can't do it. I'm gonna keep talking up for you. I don't care what happened. Until you close my mouth for the last time, I'm gonna keep my mouth open. He can do whatever he want, I'm gonna keep talking. But until next week, I thank you, Lord, for choosing me and allowing me to do this. These are all the blessings I ask in our loving Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I am Minister Marshall Bell, Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church, where my pastor is Jay Marlin. Um, Please come by and visit with us. We have Sunday service every Sunday open. Um, and then we're on YouTube live and recorded. Like, just like you're going to hear my Bible study on the record. But uh, I have no idea what my master going to talk about next week. But I will be here ready, willing, and able to do his will. Like I said, Satan's not going to shut me up. He can't. He can't do it. Only way God can shut me up, but he ain't. And I'm gonna talk up for Jesus till I croak. But until next week, I will say bye bye.